reports from Mumbai. Valli Arunachalam has been fighting a pitched battle for the past six months for a seat on the board of her company. One of the heirs to the Murugappa Group, a $5 billion conglomerate which sells everything from insurance to fertilizers and auto parts, she says her uncles and cousins are denying her a seat at the table only because she's a woman. While every branch of the Murugappa family tree has at least one representative on the board, our family branch has no representation. This is the only branch that has female heirs and no male heir. So this is clearly gender bias. The Murugappa group has declined to comment on the matter. But Arunachalam's fight is possibly the most high-profile example of the deep-seated gender bias prevalent in parts of corporate India, where women in senior management positions are few and far between. The climb up the corporate ladder is a struggle for women, not just here in India, but across the world. Goldman Sachs recently announced that it will not do IPOs for companies that have all-white, all-male boards. In fact, here in India as well, regulation mandates that companies of a certain size have at least one woman on the board. And that is bringing about some improvements. In 2012, around 5% of board members at select listed companies were women. That figure has risen to 15% in 2019. Industrial giant the Godrej Group has been one of India's largest producers of soaps, shampoos and hair dyes over the past century. Its consumer division has five women on a 14-member board. We tested them. None of its chairperson says it's as much a business imperative as a moral one. Our consumers, you know, the deciders, even if they're men and children using the products, it's normally the woman who's deciding and shopping and buying. So, you know, how can you not have that representation of what real life is? I mean, real life is 50-50. And that's Godridge's immediate goal, 50-50 or a board that's gender equal. Nikhil Anandar, BBC News, Mumbai.